welcome today we would start with 20 tricky questions for your uh, aims examination so we would be covering the 20 questions on biology for the same now for every question that we would be covering make sure there are some uh, confusing elements or some areas where students are struck up so make sure that you cover those properly so for each of the question that we would be going through we would have a timer and that timer would help you understand as to how to go around with the questions here okay so the first question that we have here is the question on velamen and its presence in orchid so what we have done for you is a simple system we would have as soon as we will start this we would have a buzzer on and with the buzzer you would have the timing and you would have to write down your correct answer within that timing so let's start for the first question so your time starts now we have the question with the choices and what you have to understand is what is velamen and uh, the velamen that is present in orchid what does it helps in or what is its actual role so let's wait for a couple of seconds now once you have the content with you the ideas with you will work on the answers so i'll just start giving you some hints so since it's already 30 seconds that have gone <clears throat> let's understand what is velamen so basically these are non-living compact cells that are present and these velamens help in the absorption of moisture so absorption of the moisture uh, here comes to be the correct answer so c gets the correct answer these also provide so sangha has a correct answer here good so it also provides uh, basically support to the cell and prevents any kind of water loss that is there so that's the first question that we have covered uh, we would be moving on to the second question now uh, for the every series that we would be doing uh, randomly we would pick out one question and the person who answers it first and correctly would get a prize from our side so stay tuned do subscribe and work on so here we have the next sorry the next question what is hydrophonics i have the buzzer on for you now and you have to start answering you have the time that runs up here so start working on the question i am expecting a quick response so a good correct response rather so what is hydrophonics basically is sangha the answer is b sangha you have a correct answer again so a uh, soilless culture basically talks about a culture which does not require soil hydrophonics is a kind of soilless culture but it occurs in liquid so exactly i cannot say it's the only soilless culture that exists okay it's one kind of soilless culture that is there and you have hydrophonics which is a soilless culture from here which is a correct answer good going you could do it in 30 seconds and that was really really great now let's move on to the next question here so which of the following statements is true now this is a question where you would be uh, having a surprise gift from our side so we have the buzzer that starts now Shahid has the answer as B. I am waiting for the others to answer. Shahid, is this the answer for the question on uh, which statement is true or the other question? 30 seconds have passed by. Come on, quick. You still have time. Okay, so uh, basically you have two bases, purines and pyrimidines. So purines have the base A and G that is adenine and guanine and pyrimidines have the base that is cytosinin, uracil and thiaminine. For adenine and uh, guanine basically you have four nitrogen atoms that is present and 
for uh, cytosine, uracil and thiamine which are part of pyridine. So these are parts of purine group, the others are part of pyrimidine and all these compose the DNA and the RNA. So for DNA you have thiamine which is replaced by uracil in case of RNA. So pyrimidines have two nitrogen. So that's the important thing that you need to remember here. Now uh, Siddham had a correct answer, good. So you get a uh, surprise from our side, good going Siddham. Uh, now next question here, how many sperms are formed from a secondary spermatocyte? Uh, I'll start the buzzer now. So we have 30 seconds about to complete, correct, Sangha has a correct answer, the right answer is B, it's just opposite to the site of entry of the sperm to the ovum and this is, uh, sorry, uh, we are talking about the sperm, sorry, uh, that's, the before, uh, that's the question where you have the answer is 2, now you have 2 cycles of meiosis that occurs, so the primary spermatocyte basically occurs or divides uh, in two phases, so you have meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So this is what has been asked for meiosis 2 stage and where you have the haploid spermatocytes that are formed and you have two that are formed. So two haploids are formed, so two comes to be the correct answer, very good. Uh, the next question we have, what is grey crescent area, sorry I got confused here, now you have the buzzer on. So. Uh, Good if you have not heard the answer before. So Shahid, you have the answer B, that's correct. So it's basically just opposite to the site of entry of the sperm into ovum. And the grey crescent basically when we talk about is, an, uh, is basically talked about in amphibians. Now what's important to understand here is you should not confuse this grey crescent with grey matter. So grey matter when we talk about talks about human brain. So you have the grey matter and the white matter and grey crescent talks about the amphibians. However, this question was easy because it does not had a choice from human brain but there could have been a confusing choice from brain as well. So make sure you don't get confused in questions like these and therefore we have tried to bring around some of the important questions for you. Now the next question is again very very important question. So I have the buzzer that starts now. So the question asks, injury to vagus nerve in humans is not likely to affect. Now for questions like these, make sure you read the word not very carefully. Now since you have the question in front of you, try to bring up or come up with the answers. I'm waiting for the answers now. I'll wait for another 10 seconds. Sangha A. Very good, that's a very correct answer. So basically, vagus nerves are pneumogastric nerves. So that's another name for the vagus nerve. So pneumo means lungs, gastric means leading to or dealing with the digestive system. So it talks about digestive systems, lungs and heart. So three things that you need to remember about vagus nerves. So vagus nerves supplies to uh, lungs, heart and digestive system. So what happens here is pancreatic, cardiac, uh, cardiac and gastrointestinal becomes the correct choice. So the only incorrect choice here would be the tongue movement. So A is the correct answer. Good going. Now uh, let's move on to the next question. I have the buzzer that starts now. Sangha, you are getting a lot of correct answers. Good going. So, any answers for Homo erectus? The question on Homo erectus? D, 
No, Shahid. The correct answer is Pleistocene. So, Pleistocene is the phase when Homo erectus started to evolve. Now, the topic on evolution is very, very important. You have a standard timeline and there is nothing else that could be done for it rather to memorize it. So, you can use some mnemonics to memorize it. But there is definitely one question every time on the topic of evolution. So, which era, which period, which organism came first? So, all these are the kind of questions that are jumbled up from this section. So, make sure you come up with this section correctly. And if you can learn and memorize, this becomes a very, very scoring section. So, let's move on to the next question. A very important question. I have the buzzer on for you now. The intermediate host is absent in the infection of. Now again read it carefully. The question asks about absent. Yeah, Joshi had the correct answer. So, Pelistocene was the right answer for the previous question. Now coming on to the question on intermediate host. I'll just wait for a few more seconds. Filarial worm. So, uh, Let's wait for a few more answers, Joshi. Uh, that's not a correct answer, however. So, filarial worm basically has an intermediate. C is also incorrect. So, let me help you with this question. So, filarial worm basically has an intermediate host, which is an arthropod. Then when it comes to plasmodium, definitely you have anaphylis as an intermediate host. When it comes to uh, trypezomna, uh, you have testis fly, which is an intermediate host. However, entamoeba histolic, uh, histolica, which basically leads to amoebiasis, does not have any intermediate host. So, B, entamoeba is the right answer. So, again, Sangha, you got it correct. Let's move on to the next question. Again, a very important question. The one who answers it correctly would again receive a surprise from our side. We have the uh, buzzer that is on. So, second surprise for you. Looking forward for the answer on uh, the common features of leech, cockroach and scorpion. Any guesses for the common features between leech, cockroach and scorpion? A very important question was asked in 2009 in Ames. I am looking for a correct answer rather. Nilesh has an answer. I am waiting for other answers. More answers. More answers. I won't disclose the correct answer for now. So I am waiting for the correct answer. You have a surprise gift for this question. Get going. Shahid, you are here again. Okay, so that's the correct answer. The correct answer for this question is ventral uh, nerve cord. Now, let's understand about this question a little bit. So, you have three organisms that are given. You have leech, cockroach and scorpion. Let's understand to which categories they belong. So, leech is an annelid. So that you all know very well. Then you have cockroach and scorpion. So those are arthropods. Now what are the characters of an arthropod? So characters of an arthropod you know very well are antenna and cephalization. So these two are true for arthropods, not for annelids. When it comes to annelids, nephridia becomes the correct answer. And what is true for both annelid and arthropod would be the correct answer for this question. And therefore, you have ventral nerve cord would be the correct answer for this code, uh, for this question. So D is the correct answer for this question. Uh, it was really a very important question, a very tricky question in the sense because they had brought in three, uh, three organisms and the students might be confused as to how to analyze them. So the best way is to find out the family to which they belong and then work around. So that, therefore, we do the classification, the plant classification and the animal classification to basically bring out the groups and then it helps us to answer the question much more easily because once we identify the kingdoms properly, we can answer the questions because we know the specificities or the technicalities for each of those. So that's that was a really good question and good going Shahid. So just we have the next question here. Now, this question was again asked in Ames. I would have the buzzer on here. So, start solving this question. The question on microvilli. The 
the question on microvilli, uh, let's work around with the correct answer. Any answers so far? No, Sangha? No. So basically, uh, when we talk about microvilli, you know the function of microvilli. So basically, it helps in expansion of the uh, digestive tract or the digestive area and better absorption. So similar to microvilli, you have typhlosols and earthworm. So typhlosols and earthworm, A would be the correct answer. Now, uh, many times you would have questions as to this uh, organ in human body or this organ in frog or cockroach resembles or has a similar function to which organ in human body. So those are the kind of questions that are commonly asked. So again, what you can do is towards your revision period, you can just have a quick ideas about those. And once you have the ideas, you have to just memorize and it again becomes very, very scoring. The next question is a question from the section on genetics. Now, uh, molecular biology so basically this question is very very important for your aims perspective you have the buzzer on so start solving it now what is the source of eco r1 so basically uh, eco r1 let me give you a hint it is a type 2 uh, restrictive endonuclease enzyme so what's the difference between a type 1 enzyme and a type 2 enzyme first of all if you are clear about that you can answer this question very easily so, uh, who has the answer for this question? Uh, the E. coli question. Joshi C, right, it's the correct answer. So, basically, you have type 1 enzymes and type 2 enzymes. So, what's the difference between the two? Let's first understand that. So, when I say type 2 enzyme, they cut out at a definite position. When I say type 1, they cut out randomly. So, here we are talking about the type 2 and they are cutting out at a fixed position or a fixed difference we can say. And therefore, you have E. coli Ry13 as the correct answer for this question. Again, this was a direct question. This question is again important because this was a part of a recent discovery that was made. And this discovery was related to skits. So I have uh, sets that has a hint for you. So if you are able to uh, understand that, that's well and good. So start going. The hint is already gift, uh, already there. So uh, Joshi has a question about uh, gift. So definitely that's a surprise. We'll have more sessions out here. So don't worry, everyone would get a chance. Just bring in your friends so you would have more ideas about what is the surprise. So here, uh, the question was, the first clinical gene therapy was given in 1992. Okay. Now when I say the first therapy was given in 1992, this therapy basically dealt about the adenosine uh, diaminase deficiency and it was basically to deal with the disease which is known as skids that is the severe combined immunodeficiency disorder that is present and during that time this terminology was basically in the period of evolution and therefore uh, this became a very important term during that time so C is the correct answer here the next question again a kind of direct question very simple question I guess you would not require more than 15 seconds to answer this question so looking for the answer on the question on bacteria, fungi, lower plants, uh, just come up with the answer. Any answers? This is a quick question, not much to think and read here. Yes, yeah, Sheetal, we do have the, uh, the NCRT handouts. You, you can avail those. Uh, Siddham and Sangha, you have the correct answer. Great going. So you have formation of a thick walled spores and those basically help them survive in the adverse conditions. So bacteria, fungi and lower plants survive through this mechanism. So that's the correct answer for this. Very, very good. Let's move on to the next question. This is again a very important question. I have the buzzer on for you. This question has not to do with the buzzer much. If you know, it would be in the fraction of seconds you can answer it. And this is something interesting. So while studying biology, uh, sometimes some things come up that really awake you of the studies. So 
this is one of those i have a good uh, description for this let's wait for the answer first siddham b great siddham you have a correct correct answer for this so bitter taste is the correct answer good going you could do it in less than 15 seconds now basically monarch butterflies they uh, lay their eggs on a plant which is known as milkweed now when they lay their eggs on the plant milkweed what happens is there is a kind of secretion or a chemical that wraps around the egg during that time and that gives it a kind of bitter taste now with the because it has a bitter taste the predator won't attack it and therefore it would be protected and that's the simple reason how it protects itself so monarch butterfly is basically protected from its predators by the bitter taste that it has and that was a kind of uh, interesting question i would say the next is what is the characteristics of tepetium so i have the buzzer on for you so start working with this question um shahid no that's not the correct answer for tepetium multinucleated yes siddham and sanga you have the correct answer good going so tepetium basically is the innermost uh, region of the uh, microsporangia cell walls or the wall layers of the microsporangia and these are multinucleated so c here gets the correct answer or c basically is the correct answer so basically uh, this layer forms a, uh, i could say a covering around the sp sporogenous tissue and helps in the movement or the passage of the food through it so c gets the c is the correct answer here so let's move on to the next question a uh, very interesting question related to environment i have the buzzer on so what are catalytic converters now you already know what is catalysis so when we say catalysis it's basically speeding up the process but what does basically cata catalytic converter do what's their role so what's the role of catalytic converter siddham you have a correct answer basically the idea is to convert the toxic by products into less toxic form so what happens is carbon monoxide is highly poisonous or toxic or noxious we can say and this carbon monoxide is converted into carbon dioxide which is less harmful or less toxic so d would be the correct answer for this question and that's the basic function of a catalytic converter i have the next question for you here a very simple question direct question based on rote learning but i have something to share here so who basically gave the cell theory now uh, if i give you a simple hint uh, might be you would come up with the answer so cell theory was brought about by two persons uh, is there something that i can help you good c so botanist and a zoologist is the correct answer so what happens basically is cell theory was propounded by shilden and shavin shilden was the first to work around the cells in plants so what he discovered was a plant cell later on his colleague his friend shavin come in and shavin basically discovers about the cells that are present in animals so animal cells were discovered and later on together gave the theory which was known as cell theory so one was basically a botanist shilden who worked on the plants the other was shavin who worked on animals and he was a zoologist so one was botanist the other was zoologist two people discovered it now i rather confused you because i said two people worked on it so quickly there was an answer c i know you might be knowing it for a fact but there could be a case where both of them could be a botanist both of them could be a zoologist so make sure even if you are studying you are even working around the minute details in your study so 90% of you would know that okay shilden and shavin gave the cell theory but who were actually they what was the story behind that is important and that's something you catch up from your ncrts so this is not basically easily found in other references or the guides that you would be referring but this is something that you can derive easily from your ncrts so don't miss out your ncrts and that's the message here 
Now the next question, the photosynthesis 2 or PS2, I have the buzzer on. So last three questions, work around. Now <clears throat> photosynthesis 2, uh, this is the question on PS2, uh, Siddham that's not the correct answer. So now since I have said C is not the correct answer, you are left with just three choices. So all of you just work around it. B, Sangha you have the right answer. So granal thylakoids are the area where you have the photosynthesis 2 that takes place. It's basically usually located in the body of plants, algae and cyanobacteria, And basically it's the process of dependent reactions of oxygenic photosynthesis that takes place in this area. So uh, that's the correct answer. Now the next question, very very important, I have the buzzer on. So glycolysis, Krebs cycle is something you should not miss. Any answer for the question on glycolysis? Uh, Joshi A, right answer. So uh, that's the, oh you retracted your answer. Okay, no issues. So uh, you had the right answer. Oxidation is the correct answer for this. Now what happens here? After glycolysis, what happens is pyruvate changes into acetylcholine and now what would happen is with the process of oxidation this would break down into carbon dioxide and water by Krebs cycle and that would take place where that would take place in the mitochondrial matrix. So that's the correct answer for it. So oxidation would be the correct answer for it. Yes, you have to know the Krebs cycle very well for this. Okay. Next question and the last question for today. So I have the buzzers on. Which of the following element is present in very less quantity in the body? Now I guess this is a kind of very simple question. However, uh, this was a question from Ames. So uh, let's see how many of you catch it correctly. Shahid A, no. Siddham D, right answer. So basically what we are trying to understand here is the presence of trace elements. And when we say trace elements, manganese, copper, iodine, iron so all these occur as trace elements in the body now the thing here is many of the students might get confused with c and d however when it's c it's mg not mn so read the question very very carefully don't get nervous don't get panicked during the exam mg is not a trace element however it, if it was mn that is manganese not magnesium manganese is a trace element so that's the key aspect here of understanding and solving the question i hope you like the series if you like it we would schedule more further events uh, on the home page you would have the reminders for the upcoming events so you can easily join our event and you can set a reminder call there uh, we'll bring in more questions uh, so if this works on it would be great and those who have won uh, the questions in this exam do wait for your gifts have a good day ahead